All right, I'm going to start doing this thing called Tales from the Shop. It's a bunch of stories that accumulated over the years, and the first one I think most of you are going to find kind of funny. If not, oh well. So, in uh, Greece in 02, just after 9-11, we got sent to uh, Greece to fortify an airport, and the island of Crete, as a matter of fact, fortify an airport and a port. And uh, while we were there, I was with a battalion, and a couple of my friends that were in my first battalion were stationed there. Well, one of them ended up buying a CJ5 Jeep, two-wheel drive. Didn't even know they made such an animal. Had a straight axle in the front. Anyways, he's from Texas, and you know Texas, nobody wants a two-wheel drive. He tells me, it's like, man, I really wish this was a four-wheel drive. I said, hey, I was looking out in the rot lot, and there's about a 1991 Land Rover out there. You know, we're in Europe, so Land Rovers are common, I figure. I said, we should go see if it runs. And if you know what a rot lot is, it's where other military members were stationed there, and they left, and they leave their cars, and just, you know, they left their title with the base. And you could actually acquire these cars for almost nothing. I think you had to plate them or something there. But he says, oh, and if you wanted one, it was no big deal. So I said, we just got to know that it runs. I said, it's got an American 215 V8 that... Land Rover bought in 1964 and ran to the late 90s. I was like, we can take the engine, the transmission, the transfer case, and the axles and slap them right under this Jeep. Who gives a shit? And he's excited. He's like, ooh, a small little V8 and this little Jeep. Right on. So, turn around. Uh, my buddy's name was, uh, we called him Danny Mac. Or Mac Daddy. So, Danny is uh, geeked. So we get off work one day, or it was a Saturday, whatever day it was, I don't remember now, but I grab some tools, we go down to the rot lot. I take a screwdriver, I get the door open, pop the handle out, no big deal. So then I pull apart the column, and the way your Land Rover has it, it's a real simple setup. They got a, a key, you got the little tumblers, and it's got a rod that goes in to uh, a gear, you know, almost like a GM. And when I seen it, I'm like, oh, you gotta be shitting me, this is gonna be simple. So there was something about it, the rod just wouldn't do what I wanted. I ended up breaking the rod out of it, and I just took a screwdriver and mashed down on it, and it unlocked the steering wheel and started. And we're like, oh, shit. So we drove it around outside the base there a little bit. We come back, and we're like, wow, this thing runs really good. Now, remember, this is the rot lot. This is abandoned vehicles. Nobody wants this stuff. So it's like a Tuesday night, and, and Danny Max like, Let's do that this weekend. He's like, your shop or mine, because I got a battalion shop and he's got public works. And he says, we'll do it in my shop because I have better better tools than you. I'm like, you know, welders and whatnot. I'm like, that's fine, whatever, I didn't care. So let's fast forward to the week. Now, we our base is on a runway, so it's just it's kind of long down the side. It's not spread out. So turn around, and my shop is right next to the fire station. Well, he's down there for some reason because he's with Public Works. I don't know why he was in there. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. It's not doesn't pertain to this story real quick. But he goes in there and he has this conversation with the fire chief. Not just one of the peons, the chief. He says, hey, yeah, they're talking. He's like, yeah. I, I, and he goes, tells him I bought that two-wheel drive Jeep off the base that everybody's been running around in and blah, blah, blah. He says, we're going to make it a four-wheel drive this weekend. And I guess the chief looks at him. He says, well, why don't you buy a four-wheel drive? I'll sell you one. He says, oh, what do you got? He goes, I've got a 91 Land Rover. He goes, oh, he goes, what do you want for? He says, five grand. <laughs> it gets better. So this fool, after talking to me, he's like, well, is it at your house? He's like, no, it's down at the end of the, oh, right outside the base in the rot lot. <laughs> We've already had this thing running. We ripped it apart a little bit and was cruising around town in it, right? So turn around. My shop's right next to me. He walks out of there and runs into my shop, and he is losing his mind. Losing his mind. He had obviously never gotten no trouble as a kid, whereas myself, I just shrug it off. I didn't give a shit. He says, uh, oh, my God, oh, my God. They're gonna, they're, they, he owns the car. He wants five grand for it. He's going to find out we, we screwed up the column and the door and blah, blah, blah. And he's just he's losing his shit. And I'm like, calm down. It's like, wait till after work. We'll go over there. So what we did is we went over there, I, I popped the handle back in, I made the handle work. I don't know how I did that, but it, it was working. We were done to a point. Couldn't lock the door and get back in it. 
So I left it unlocked so he didn't have to unlock it. You know what I mean? So he may have thought he just didn't lock that one door, I was hoping. But the real kicker was going to be when he jumped in it and tried to put a key in it. Because remember that bar that links the, the, the tumblers to the, to, the, yeah, to the switch? Yeah, that was broken half. <laughs> so it was not connected anymore. So I get it all back together, and he's flipping. My my buddy, he's flipping out, flipping out. Ooh, it is the end of the world. They're going to find fingerprints. They're going to have us on camera screwing off in town. You know, I think this is 02. This ain't like 2020 where everybody's got a phone like when I'm recording myself on, and you're recording everything. So I'm like, just calm down. So I get it all back together. He goes, what about when he puts a key in there? I'm like, why do we give a shit? He's not going to know we were in here. He's wiping the steering wheel down the shifter. <laughs> I'm dying laughing. This went on for months till I left. He's going, oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm like, dude, it's been months. Nothing. And the guy had never went out there. The, the, he'd said the truck had been sitting there for two months beforehand. He'd bought a new one and he was trying to sell it. And nobody was interested because he was asking five grand for a freaking Land Rover that was worth 1500 bucks tops. So it was going to sit there till he realized he was to ask what he wanted on it. Well, we left and... I ended, he ended up catching up with me later somewhere, and he's like, oh, I think he still sweats that to this day, that he's going to get caught for stealing land over. Well, well, Danny, we're in the States. That was Greece. They can't touch us. Y'all have a good night.